How's it going everyone? I am Levi Peters and this is Levi Explains on MI Garner. And today we're talking about a tree that you have probably don't know anything about but you've probably seen. And that's a ginkgo biloba. This is a really strange tree. At first glance, you may notice a few quirks on it that look a little different. But when you learn more about it, it's really, really strange and really cool. Let's get into it. So the name ginkgo is a butchering of a Japanese translation of a Chinese word for the tree. I'm not even gonna bother pronouncing it because I'm just gonna butcher it anyway. And if you look at the leaves of this tree, it's really, really interesting because they're fan-shaped. They almost look like the Australian fan palm, the likuala. Uh, but just not as big. And the veins are fan shaped too. They're not a network. So it's a tree, but it doesn't have veins branching out all over the place. So obviously it's not a dicot, but it has actual wood and secondary growth on it. So it can't be a monocot. So what is it? Well, it's neither because this tree is older than dicots and monocots themselves. This is the oldest tree species in the world possibly. And it dates back 270 million years ago. Whoa, that's just hard to comprehend. And it comes from China, this one. It used to be a more worldwide species, but all of them died except for one, the ginkgo biloba from China. Now they're planted everywhere. These trees have male and female. They're not in the same tree, they're both different. And the weird thing is they use a certain type of cone instead of just normal flowers, you know, and seeds like a dicot wood or a monocot wood. They use a certain type of cone, even though it doesn't look like one. And they fertilize the same way as cycads, fern, moss, and algae. I mean, this is some really old stuff. The tree is used in culinary use and also in traditional Chinese medicine, where it's thought to help cognitive functions. Some trees in China in these temples are thought to be at least 1500 years old. It's insane. It's a very strong and sturdy tree. And check this out. These trees are so tough that six of them survived the bombing at Hiroshima. They were from like 0.62 miles to 1.2 miles away from ground zero. And they survived. That's insane. Now you can see why they've survived for 270 million years. I mean, they survived nuclear bombs. Dang. And you can actually still see those six trees today in Hiroshima. They're all labeled. So yeah, that's it. Just a little bit about the ginkgo biloba. It's a pretty cool tree. And when I first heard about it, I was so geeked. And then I realized that at a church like a few blocks from me, there was a bunch of ginkgo bilobas planted there. And I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta see them. So I'd actually walk up to see them because I was so interested in them. And it was pretty cool. Now every time I see them, I'm just like, oh, there's a ginkgo, oh, there's a ginkgo. And they look really exotic, actually, when you actually take time to look at the leaves and see how they feel. They're very thick and almost rubbery. It's pretty, pretty doggone interesting. But be careful, though, because the females of these, sorry, ladies, they stink, apparently. I mean, they smell awful. Oh, this isn't even B.O. This is beyond B.O. It's B.B.O. So if you want to plant one of these and don't want your house to stink, you might want to pick the other sex. But before I go, in the comment section down below, write down and let me know if you've known any of these facts about this tree and if you have one yourself and didn't know about it. I'd love to know what you guys think about this. All right, with that being said, I'll see you guys soon. Later. All right. Well, that's just off the top of my head. I love the ginkgo.